Under the light of day, Australia's sunshine coast is a splendor to behold. And from a bird's eye view, the cresting waves seem to land upon the shore with a gentle precision. Yet when exploring on foot, you will quickly learn that the shoreline is anything but gentle, and instead is riddled with dangers like slippery, jagged rocks. When the sun sets, this location becomes even more dangerous as violent waves crash upon the shoreline and create a completely inhospitable environment for humans. Searching these turbulent waters for a camouflage shark won't exactly make this mission easy, and our window of opportunity is limited. We will only have a few hours to explore, as the return of high tide will be a constantly looming threat. So as the crew and I head toward the crashing call of the ocean, our senses are on high alert. Careful, you still got some big waves coming in. Uh, let's go up through this. See, it almost looks like a river flowing through here. When the waves come in, it's a big swell. And when they come back out and all of that water seeps, you see this? All of it coming down? That's when something can get washed up and stranded. So I'm going to be constantly looking at the flows of water to see if anything's flopping around. That gives us a chance to catch it. When night falls, the tide pools reveal a plethora of new creatures that were hidden during the day. This trait of being more active at night is known as nocturnality. Oh, here, look at this guy. That's a decent sized stone crab. I'm gonna turn off my flashlight, we good on lights. Yeah, you definitely don't want to get pinched by a crab like this. Oh, oh. And that's uh... and that's uh that's how a gust of water comes through, takes your flashlight. Alright, and may have also taken my net. There it is. See? That's why I was saying at night you really have to watch the waves because they sneak up on you. All right, the crab's still there. Somebody keep an eye on our backs. Let me see if I can get this guy out. Come here, buddy. Uh -huh. There we go. There we go. Those are some serious pinchers. It's taking all my strength to hold this guy in place. And I can just imagine that if you were to get one of your fingers stuck in there, you definitely would regret it. This guy's like a little Popeye. Unbelievably powerful. Primarily, they're feeding on plant matter, so these claws are mostly used for defense. But what they'll do is tuck these in in front of the face, wedge themselves into a corner, and then nothing can get at them. That is one seriously intimidating crustacean. Ready? See you later, buddy. So here's one thing that's tricky about the tide pools at night. See all the foam on top of the water? And all the ripples just reflect the flashlight beam. So your eyes really begin to start disorienting themselves. You get a little bit dizzy when you're out here walking, which is not good considering the waves coming in and how slippery all these rocks are. The most important thing is to just really move slow and take your time. Here, check this out. What do you got? See these rocks? It's a fish. Oh, 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 look at that. It's just going to show you the texture of the rocks and how you don't want to fall on these. That is a little clip fish or some sort of a blenny. Let me see if I can get him picked up real quick. Got him, got him, got him. Here, let's back up just a touch. Whoa, whoa. Whoa, good timing. Jeez. I got him. Check that out. They'll come up from beneath the crevices at night and just sit out on the rocks. This is a fish species that can actually stand on the water for a considerable amount of time. Look at that, the little eyeballs are up on top of the head. They've got excellent eyesight, especially at night. And look at that cool pattern. Looks just like all of the rock structure here on these rock flats. This guy's just about as cool as it gets. He's not even trying to get away. That was a pretty simple catch. I didn't even need to use my net. All right, let's place this little guy back down into the water and find something bigger. I got something for you, Coyote. What do you got? Oh! oh I see hair. Sweet! I got you a booger. It is like a booger. This is one of my, oh man, come on now. Sliming me. Yes, check that guy out. And the reason they got the name sea hair is that if I do this, set it down in the water for a second, get those little eye stalks to come up, 
Those are not proper eyes, not high functioning eyes. All they can do is sense light and movement, but the shape of them almost look like rabbit's ears, hence the name sea hare. Now these two appendages up front sense chemicals within the environment. What these slugs will do is slowly move along over the rock flats or through the tide pools, searching out plant matter. Just in front of the mouth, they have this little scrapey pad called a radula. It's almost like a cheese grater. And as they move along, it scrapes up the plant matter, and that then filters into their mouths. When the slug is out of the water like this, it is completely fine. In fact, when the tide goes all the way out, sometimes these slugs will get marooned in pockets that completely dry up. What they will do in that instance is curl their body up tightly, close up the parapodia, and then when the tide returns, the slug whoop, kind of puffs back up and can float away. When they get disturbed, what they'll do is excrete a purple ink. And it's only when they feel as if they're gonna be eaten by something. This won't hurt it in any way whatsoever. We'll see if we can get it to feel like, oh, I'm being eaten. Chomp, chomp, chomp. Oh, inking me good there. Well, I think it just pooped on me, actually. Ugh and they'll use that as a defense against any potential predators covered in slime and ink. But I absolutely love sea hares. All right, let's get this guy back into the tide pools and keep making our way down the coastline. Oh, that's a lot of slime right there. Yuck. Let's put him right here up against this rock. See you later, little buddy. I see some fish jumping up there. You see, look at all those fish jumping. Do you pay attention though, because if fish are jumping out of the water, there could be a shark. This is definitely deep enough for there to be a shark. Shark, 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 shark. Shark, 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 shark. Shark right here. You got a shark? Shark. I'm not gonna be able to get it with the water this deep. You see it? Right there up against that edge. Nobody move. It's moving, hold on. Here, give me your light. I do not want to get bit. Hold this light, hold this light. Watch it, watch it, watch it. I lost it, hold on. I got the light, I got the light. Man, I cannot believe that got away. Do you see the way that it turned its body? Yeah. It almost got my hand, man. Like it, it bit the edge of the net. Wubigons definitely have teeth that will open you up. I had to let go of it. I think it went this way. It's angry now. It knows we're onto it. Where did it go? Watch your ankles. I think it went back out through those rocks. I would say though, conditions seem like really right for the fish to be out here, which means there's probably more than one will be gone hunting, I would assume. We gotta keep going. Coyote, don't go out too far in those waves, not worth it. I don't care if that tide comes all the way in and swallows us, we're finding the shark. When it comes to interactions with sharks, I am no stranger to our planet's most misunderstood ocean predator. I've had the life-changing experience of diving alongside sharks, and in the process, even came face to face with a 14-foot tiger shark. This encounter definitely ranks as one of my all-time closest calls, as an accidental bite from a shark of this size can easily kill you. Yet this was not an aggressive animal. It was a curious animal. Sharks use their snouts and mouths to test their environment. As a human, if you enter the world of sharks, you're probably going to get tested. In my previous encounters, I wasn't attempting to catch these larger sharks, just observe them. Yet with the well-camouflaged Wubi Gong, observing one passively at night in these harsh conditions is virtually impossible. 